so now now we're gonna talk about a special term called radioisotopes and then we're gonna talk about what is alpha and beta decays so let's let's get start with a new topic called radioisotopes okay so now let's talk about the radioisotope before before we talk about more about the radioisotope let me ask you about this question this question over here so if you're doing any chemical reaction most of the time how the chemical reaction work what are the main thing that involve in the chemical reaction is the number of valence electron so only the well the new the valence electron or the electron that is present in the valence energy level of the atom takes part in the chemical reaction in most of the in most of the cases but there are some reaction that doesn't include the valence electron or the any electron but they involve subatomic particle proton neutron electron proton and neutron not electron right so those the type of reaction that use these subatomic particle proton and neutron we call as we call that reaction as nuclear reaction because in this reaction only proton the the subatomic particle that is present within the nucleus take part in the reaction right this is different than the chemical reaction that takes part because of the valence num valence electrons or the electrons revolving the last orbit right <clears throat> so what are radioisotopes before we talk about radioisotope we already learn about what are isotopes isotopes are the atom of the same element that are, that have same number of protons but different number of neutrons so we already talk about this thing so <clears throat> in nature most of these type of isotopes that are present are normally stable but a large number of those isotopes of the given element are not stable right if 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 somebody is not stable they're going to release some energy right they want to convert into a more stable isotope so radioisotopes are the isotope <clears throat> which is unstable and spontaneously emit energy to form a more stable nucleus so that means radioisotopes has an unstable nucleus means the nucleus is not stand unstable is not stable and to become stable they have to release an excess of energy from the nucleus right so they undergo a decay to form a more stable isotopes right and this decay or this release of energy is spontaneous it occurs spontaneously right and then the energy is released in the form of radiation so we have a special term also called radioactivity radioactivity so radioactivity is a process or is a nuclear radiation right the energy that is emitted in the form of radiation nuclear radiation so radioactivity is a, is the nuclear radiation emitted spontaneously by an unstable radioactive isotope right so we have one or more term called radioactive isotope right we also call this name as radioisotope <clears throat> so what we learn most of the isotopes are unstable so they normally release energy in the form of heat or energy and those those energy is released in the form of radiation called radioactivity right. so now we're going to talk about what are the type of radiation normally get emitted when unstable isotope now converting into a stable radioisotope so different form of radiation are emitted when a radioactive nucleus or radioisotope is converted into a more stable nucleus or a more stable radioisotope that include three particles one is alpha particle beta particle and gamma rays and sometimes x rays so make sure these four are normally emitted in the form of radiation whenever an unstable radioisotope goes to a stable isotope or to make a stable isotope radioisotope right 
and we're gonna talk about these thing separately in the next slide so less than 3 at 300 naturally ex existing isotope 36 are radio isotope or radioactive that means they radiate energy in the form of radiation okay. and then all isotope with an atomic number greater than 82 are radioactive so all the element that has or all the isotope that has an atomic number of more than 82 are radioactive some are natural radioactive isotope and some are artificial means man has made those isotopes that are radioactive So let's start with the first particle that we discussed that release in the form of energy which is alpha particle right? so alpha particle is a high energy particle that contain two protons and two neutrons two protons and two neutrons neutrons so if alpha particle has two proton and two neutron then on this means that has a mass number of four atomic number of two right okay an alpha particle is normally symbolized by a greek letter called alpha so this is a symbol for alpha particle right? or you can also denote the same alpha particle using an element symbol for helium so depending on whether you see an alpha particle written as 4 and 2 or or written in the form of an element called helium 2 and 4 because if you can see you have the same number of proton and mass number right like an alpha particle so sometimes book use alpha sometimes book use helium so both has the same meaning Okay. and whenever the radioisotope release a particle in this case an alpha particle then the new product or new element that is made we call that element as a daughter nucleide so remember these particular terms that we are going to use later on so on this slide we are going to talk about a special term called nuclear equation how we can use a nuclear equation to show the difference to show the decay of any particle whether is alpha particle beta particle or gamma rays we usually show in the form of nuclear equation and what is nuclear equation like for a chemical reaction we usually balance the number of atom on both side of of the reaction similarly in radio <clears throat> in a nuclear reaction we balance the mass number and the atomic number for the nuclei that's taking part in the reaction so that's the difference between the chemical reaction balancing and the nuclear reaction balancing where the nucleus is taking part right for example if we take an example of an alpha decay because we are talking about an alpha particle so alpha decay is a loss of an alpha particle from from the radioisotopes producing a daughter nucleide or nucleus with a mass number of four less than the parent nucleus or nucleide an atomic number of two less than the parent nucleus or nucleate what does it mean so this is a nuclear reaction let's say over here you start with the parent nucleus whatever the nucleus in this case is radium ra with a mass number of 223 atomic number of 88 after the alpha decay has happened or after the nucleus release an alpha particle to get into a stable nucleide we form a nucle daughter nuclei or daughter nucleus right so the time you release or the nucleus release an alpha particle that means how many protons it release it release two proton and how many number of neutron it release in this particular case, number of neutron two right so whatever the <clears throat> and then was the daughter nucleus it produced rn with a mass number of 219 and the atomic number of 86 so what you see over here in a nuclear reaction 
remember this thing whenever we balance a nuclear reaction the number of the mass number on the parent side always has to have equal on the product side right so let's say what's the mass number you have on the parent side you started with 223 you release an alpha particle that has a mass number of 4 then you are making a new nucleus with rn element then the mass number is 219 so 219 plus 4 is equal to 233 right so that means the sum of the mass number must be equal on both side of the nuclear equation remember this thing the second thing is the sum of the atomic number must be equal on both side of the nuclear reaction so in this case on the left side of the nuclear reaction you have atomic number of 88 on the right side of this nuclear reaction you have to have the atomic number of 88 the sum so the, the daughter nucleotide has atomic number of 86 alpha particle has 2 so 86 plus 2 88 which is just as the starting point of the parent parent chain or parent nucleus so <clears throat> let me tell you one more time so in a nuclear reaction nucleate equation normally written which contain the original nucleus new nucleus other radiation emitted so in this case original nucleus is ra with 223 mass number 88 atomic number new the new nucleus that is formed is rn within mass number of 219 atomic number of 86 and then the emitted radiation in this particular case is an alpha particle which is which has a mass number of four atomic number of two right so in in the nuclear reaction you always see the sum of the mass number must be equal on both side of the nuclear reaction as well as the sum of the atomic number must be equal on both side of the nuclear reaction so you have to just check these couple of things whenever you make any nuclear reaction so let's try one more example on alpha decay the problem is saying write the balanced nuclear equation for the alpha decay we know what is alpha alpha is 4 2 mass number 4 atomic number 2 of an element radium 226 the time i know the symbol of the element ra i know the atomic number from the periodic table is 88 and what is 226 this is an isotopes of radium with a mass number 226 right? so one did one is dk to get into a more stable form it released an alpha particle and by releasing alpha particle it decreasing the mass number by 4 atomic number by 2 so out of the 226 4 is released you got you left with 222 88 out of the 88 atomic number 2 was released in, in the form of alpha particle left with 86 so the time I see the 86 I know this element is Rn so this is how you normally make a nuclear reaction Right, you balance it nuclear reaction and let's compare whether the nuclear reactions are balanced or not so how you balance it you have to see the sum of the mass number must be equal on both sides of the nuclear reaction was the mass number over here 226 in the product side was the mass number 222 from here plus 4 from here so 222 plus 4 226 so that means mass number is balanced on both side of the nuclear reaction let's say was the second rule says the sum of the atomic number must be equal on both side of the nuclear reaction so let's say on the on the left side of the nuclear reaction atomic number is 88 on the right side on the product side the daughter nucleus has an atomic number of 86 alpha particle has 2 so total is 88 which is equal to the parent nucleus so that means this nuclear reaction is also balanced right which is doing an alpha particle decay so this is how you balance it any nuclear reaction so now let's talk about the second type of 
radiation that is released in whenever the radioisotope decay into a more stable isotope so we only talk about the alpha decay now let's talk about the beta decay the second form of the decay radiation <clears throat> so beta decay is normally is a release of a beta particle and be, what is beta particle beta particle is a high energy electron particle and usually show with the Greek symbol beta negative one zero so that means the mass is zero mass number and it has a charge of negative one or you can also write beta decay or beta particle in the form of electron because this is also a high energy electron so you can just write e negative one so both are same depending on whichever it's you can see in the exam or quiz or any anywhere in the book so don't get confused whether it's beta negative one zero or electron negative one zero they have the same thing right so what happened during the beta emission or beta decay so during beta emission one neutron one zero is going to convert into a proton 1 1 plus and what you're gonna get you're gonna get beta decay so whenever you have a beta decay what's happening in here the neutron in the nucleus is converting into a proton so that means during beta decay the mass number is not going to change <clears throat> because if you can see the mass number is same in proton and neutron but the atomic number is going to change or increase by one in the daughter product because neutron doesn't have any mass but when the nucleus convert release a beta particle you're gonna form one more proton that means you are increasing the mass of the parent chain by one the atomic number of the parent chain by one not the mass number Okay, so we'll take one example but was the main thing that you need to remember is beta particle is a high energy electron remember the symbol and during the beta decay you are not changing the mass number in the daughter nucleus or in the product but you are changing the atomic number by one that means you are increasing the atomic number by one so let's take an example On this beta D so let's try to make one nuclear equation for the beta decay for example force for force with, with a mass number of 32 atomic number of 15 whenever the force for us decay a beta particle from its nucleus is going to convert into a sulfur so what's happening over here we know beta particle is 0 negative 1 no mass number and a negative 1 charge so to balance the nuclear equation you have to make sure the sum of the mass number on each side of the nuclear reaction are same as well as the atomic num the sum of the atomic number on both sides of the nuclear equation are same so let's start with the mass number on one side of the nuclear reaction mass number is 32 on the other side is 32 plus 0 that means 32 no change so that means that's right let's see about the atomic number it has to be same too so before the re nuclear reaction the atomic number was 15 after that reaction happened and release the beta particle then you got sulfur with an atomic number of 16 but if you see the sum is 16 minus 1 because 16 plus negative 1 same as 16 minus 1 which is 15 so that means this is also same as parent atomic number so that means the sum of both atomic number as well as the mass number on the nuclear equation on both sides are equal so that means this reaction of beta decay are right right <clears throat> but if you can see over here the phosphorus element during this decay is converted into a sulfur why the element change because the number of at the, the, num the number of protons has changed because before the proton is 15 right now proton is 16 so I told you whenever the number of proton change you are changing the entire element 
the element is not the same anymore because you have changed right so this is how the beta decay nuclear reaction work right? let's take one more example it says write the nuclear reaction for decay of gold 198 the time I see gold symbol is AU I know I can go to the periodic table and figure it out was the atomic number for gold which is 79 and then the isotope is 198 which that means the mass number of that gold isotope is 198 and then it says using a beta beta emitter right if this gold, gold particle emit a beta particle from its nucleus what should be the daughter nucleus nucleus element is going to form so this is the time you release a beta particle with zero and negative one charge zero mass that means the man the atomic number is going to increase by one right that's how whenever you add negative one and 80 you will get 89 and we know whenever the beta particle release the atomic number will get increased by one so time i know is the atomic number is 80 and then if you go to the periodic table 80 is mercury right so i know the element name and then the sum of the mass number on both sides of the nuclear reaction has to be the same so this is 198 and then the product size 198 plus 0 is 198 so which is same as this side let's talk about the atomic number we have 79 on the reactant side let's say in the product side of the nuclear reaction you have 80 and if you add negative 1 you're gonna get 79 so that means sum of both atomic mass, atomic mass, mass number and atomic number are same. So that means this nuclear reactions or equation are balanced and right. So now we're going to talk about the half life. So if I ask you how fast do radioactive radioactive isotopes usually decay? So so it depends on the isotope, right? So different isotopes usually decay at different rate and then reduced decay are is exponentially they usually decay exponentially right and then the term half-life that is very important and the decay of isotopes is you usually define as half-life of a radioactive isotope is the time it takes for one half of the sample to decay so how much time does it require for one half of the sample of the original parent sample to decay okay. so that means let's say if you start with four particle how much time does it take to decay this four particle into a half so that's your half life is the time and then how much time does it need to convert two particle into one to decay into a half so this is second half life so this is normally we see was what what is the half life means right so let's take an example to visualize the half life let's start you start with 24 particle of any radio isotope right you have 24 particle after how much time let's say after one t half so what is t half time means out of the 24 particle how much time does it take to convert that 24 particle into a 12 particle so that's your half life and then after another half life the particle number is going to convert from 12 to 6 half of it right and then another half life 3 particle right and then keep going on so for after each half life you will get half of the number that you started with right this is how you normally define a half life so take one more example of half life let's say iodine 131 isotope radio isotope has a half life of 8 days that means after every 8 days the amount of the iodine 131 isotope just left half of the original one right so let's start with, if we start with 100 grams so after eight days how many grams are left or how many grams grams is left 15 grams after another eight days so that means total of 16 days 25 half of it 
and after another eight days means 24 24 half of 25 to 12.5 remains so this is how half life work so there is an altern alternate approach that you might use or you can use to determine how much amount of the product how much amount of the sample left after like certain amount of half life right? the formula says n equal to one half of n small n so capital n is normally denote the fraction of isotopes remaining how much fraction of the particular isotopes remain after certain amount of half life and n is small n is number is the number tells you how many half life that have passed All right let's take the previous example you you started with 100 grams and then you use three half life right after first half life you left with 50 grams and then was the half life eight days another eight day 25 grams another eight day 12.5 grams right that we learned in the previous slide so this is first half life this is second half life this is third half life so how many total half life like pass to get this 12.5 1 2 3 right if we use the formula n equal to 1 by 2 n so 3 is the the number of half lives that we use so that means 1 by 2 1 by 2 you'll get 1 by 8 that is 0 0.125 this is a fraction of the isotopes remaining right so what's the starting number you started with 100 grams this is the fraction that remains so if you multiply both of them you're gonna get how much amount is remaining 12.5 grams remaining is exactly the same number that we just discussed on the previous slide so is depend on you which 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 technique you think is more easy you can do it both ways right? so let's take one more example based on half-life so the half-life of a cerium one of the isotopes 141 is 32.5 days so that means t half so every 32.5 days the amount that you started with just become half right for a 110 gram sample how many grams remain after three half lives so that means how many half lives we need to consider three half life and how many days must pass so let's start let's do with both both the ways that we just learned right let's start with the first one you started with 10 grams you have three half lives so after first half life how much amount left half of the previous one five after second 2.5 half of the five after third half life half of the previous one 2.5 1.25 so this is the amount that's left after three half life and it says how many days must pass So that means what you need to do you have three half life you can just do two ways 32.5 plus 32.5 plus 32.5 so how much is gonna be so it's gonna be 97.5 days Right. so this is one way of doing just add all the three half life this that will give you the total number of days in those three half life second i can use a conversion factor i can say one half life is equal to our 32.5 days right and then how many so i can make a conversion factor i need how days so days has to be on the top how one half life is on the bottom and how many half life given three three half life so half life half life is gonna cancel just multiply three with 32.5 you're gonna get 97.5 days so it depends whether you can add or you can use a conversion factor to figure out how many days so this is how you normally do the problem depending on the half life 
now let's use the second way that we learned using a formula so the formula says n equal to 1 by 2 small n right so small n is what 3 half life is the number of half life so put 3 on the top is 1 by 0 0.125 this is the fraction of the sample that's remain after 3 half life so when you started with 10 grams so this is the fraction left so multiply both of them you will get the amount left 1.25 this is what we got when we did the first in the previous slide right using the first method and then again half life is going to be exactly the same formula 97.5 days so it's up to you which which method you're going to use to figure it out the amount of sample remain after a certain half life or how many days is going to be in total half life but you can use both of them Now we're going to talk about the high energy electromagnetic radiation. What are electromagnetic radiation? Because like we already know in radioisotope there are certain type of energy release in the form of particle like alpha particle, beta particle. But we haven't learned about till now the gamma and x-rays. Right? These are also already the, the byproduct of the radioisotope TK. So alpha... Uh, X-rays and gamma rays is a type of electromagnetic radiation that it releases in the form of energy. So before we go further, let's talk a little bit about what are electromagnetic radiation and then we'll go forward about the gamma radiation later on. So what is electromagnetic radiation? So electromagnetic radiation normally also called as a light. Is it it? This is a form of energy that travels through a space with a speed of light, right? Which is basically 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Right? This is a speed of light. And then all the electromagnetic radiation travels through space with this speed, right? And <clears throat> there are different types of light waves in, in electromagnetic radiation that is different because they have different wavelength and then if we talk about what is wavelength wavelength is a distance from the top of one wave crest to the next so that means if this is a wave so this is a wavelength this is your crest This is your wavelength. Right from one crest to the consecutive crest. That's your wavelength. The symbol of wavelength is lambda. Right. So we're gonna see an electromagnetic spectrum in the next slide and see how many different types of electromagnetic radiation we, we have. So this is a way normally this is a show like a visualization of the electromagnetic spectrum which is basically nothing is just the entire range of wavelength of all the light waves that are present and then this is normally known as electromagnetic spectrum so we have different electromagnetic rays called gamma rays x-rays uv light visible light infrared rate microwaves and radio waves and the energy of these waves, all these waves are related as inversely proportional to the wavelength of these waves. That means the lower the wavelength of any particular wave, higher the energy of that particular wave. Right? So this is the sequence of increasing wavelength. It's the 10 raised power negative 2. These are in, in, in increasing. So the, if the waves are increasing, wavelength are increasing from left to right, that means the energy is going to decrease from left to right that means the higher energy is always on the right hand side in the left hand side on this electromagnetic spectrum because it has the lowest wavelength and the lowest energy is present on the right side of this electromagnetic spectrum because it has the highest wavelength and we only know and energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength higher the wavelength the lower is the energy so that means out of the falling electromagnetic an electromagnetic rays 
Now radiation, gamma rays has the highest energy and the radio waves has the lowest energy. Right, and then you have at the center, you have the visible light too that we can see with eyes in on earth. Right, this is the wavelength for the visible light, 400 to 700 nanometer. And like we already discussed in the previous slide, the energy and the electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum, how they are related. Energy of the light is inversely proportional to the wavelength. We already talked about this thing. That means longer the wavelength, lower is the energy. Shorter the wavelength, higher is the energy. Like they are opposite. And we know that higher energy, that means those rays that have the shorter wavelength can cause biological damage. So they are in so high energy if it's struck with the biological sample it might damage that sample there's some ionizer and ionizing radiation that can also dislodge valence electron some of the example of ionization radiation is gamma rays x-rays or higher uv rays all these radiation can damage biological sample when they come in contact with it because of its high energy so now we're going to talk about those rays, radio isotope that normally emit gamma rays that is a symbol of gamma with zero mass number, no mass number and no atomic number. That means whenever the gamma rays release, it doesn't change any atomic number or mass number of the parent nuclei because this is a form of an energy, not a particle. So this is an important difference between the beta particle and alpha, alpha particle from gamma rays. So most radioactive decay include gamma rays. Right, so most of the radioactive decay that's happening, including some beta particle or alpha particle, always release gamma rays as a side product. Right, so whenever any nucleide, parent nucleide, release a beta or alpha particle, the daughter nucleide initially may be produced in an excited state. The nucleus is on a, is is gonna be an excited state, means higher energy. And then we call that excited state as matter stable state with a symbol as small m. So to, to convert that high energy state of the nucleus to a more stable energy state, nucleus or dot, daughter nuclear release a gamma rays that forms a more stable state of the nucleus. So let's take an example of gamma ray emission, gamma, gamma decay of metastable tech, technetium 99. So this is an isotopes that has a mass number of 99 and a symbol is TC 99. And this case, small m tells that the nucleus of this isotope is a metastable state, means it is an, right now in, in an excited state. So to become from, to convert from excited unstable state to a stable state, this isotope normally release gamma particle right using a radioactive decay so the 99m this m normally tells this is an the nucleus of this isotope is in metastable state higher excited state so this convert into a more stable isotope and then release a gamma particle if you see gamma particle doesn't have any atomic number mass number so it doesn't change the mass number and atomic number of the isotope it just make the state the isotope a more stable isotope and so remember this thing so whenever you see a small m written in front after the mass number that means that particular isotopes is present in the matter stable state and it has to release a gamma rays now on this topic we cannot talk about the penetration power and the biological effect of the radiation how does the radiation affect the biological sample depending on the penetration power of that particular radiation so now we're going to talk about the what is ionization radiation so ionization ionization radiation contain a sufficient energy to dislodge wireless electron and so that means they are so much high energy and that include all of them alpha particle beta gamma x-rays and high energy uv rays all are part or all are example of the ionization energy because they have high energy 
and because of this high energy whenever they come contact with the biological sample it might lead to a mutation because it might change the DNA it might break the DNA it brings some changes in the composition of the DNA and this change in DNA called mutation can affect rapidly into a reproducing cell so the damage is long lasting so now let's talk about the factors that might affect the biological damage from the radiation so there are two factor that depends how much damage that particular radiation or ionization radiation can cause to a biological sample the first one is energy of the radiation how much energy that radiation has second one is your penetration power of that radiation means what is penetration power means the measure of the extent to which a particular type of radiation passes through a matter right how, how much distance that particular radiation can pass through a matter right? that's your penetration power so if you see from here if you can see the alpha particle we're going to talk about each of them separately was the energy of the particle and was the penetration power for each of them alpha beta x-rays and gamma rays right so let's let's go to the next slide so let's talk about the the penetration power or the energy of the alpha particle alpha particle are we know is high energy particle but they are large and slow moving right because of the mass number or the mass of the alpha particle and because of the large and slow moving it has a very little penetrating power right even though it's high energy but because of the masses it has less penetrating power so even the skin or a piece of paper can stop the alpha particle but this alpha particle is very or extremely dangerous if it's ingested or inhaled because even though it's, it's not, it doesn't has a little penetrating power but but when it comes in contact with a delicate internal organ it might cause a damage to that sample of the or the internal organ right so that's why it's extremely dangerous if you inhale or ingest any alpha particle let's talk about now the beta radiation we know this has less energy than alpha particle but the important part is it has it is much lighter than the alpha particle and because of the mass is much lighter it has much more penetrating power than the alpha particle it can penetrate the skin and it can also cause damage due to the greater penetrating ability right so this is way dangerous than the alpha particle So if you see on the picture on the right side, that means a specialized heavy clothing or a thick piece of aluminum is required to stop the beta particle. If you can see, the aluminum can stop the beta particle. Now let's talk about the effect of gamma and X-ray rays. Both of them has less energy than the alpha particle and beta particle, but the important thing is the penetrating power of both of them x-rays and gamma rays are much more than alpha and beta particle and because of this more penetrating power these two are potentially far more damaging than beta and alpha particle and then it has many uses in some medical application and if you can see from the right hand side picture that is given over here a thin sheet of lead is required to stop the x-ray and then a several inches of lead is required for gamma rays so that means gamma rays is the most destructive rays or ionization radiation that you can have out of the four alpha beta x-ray and gamma rays right because it needs several inches of the lead right and it can penetrate paper aluminium thin sheet of lead that is mostly more than enough for alpha beta and particle and x-rays So let's take an example, whatever we learned on the ionization radiation till now, and let's try to do solve this problem. Which of the following types of radiation, alpha, beta, gamma, or x-ray are stopped by a sheet of paper? Alpha particle, because, because of the size, a sheet of aluminum. We learned the beta particle 
we need a sheet of aluminium right it cannot be stopped by a skin or a piece of paper then if you have a thick slab of lead x-ray and gamma rays skin x-rays because of the large size skin can also stop alpha particle okay so we are done for this chapter so make sure you read the textbook and then follow the video that whatever we learn in this powerpoint and that should be it bye, bye.